Hello and welcome to another week with Mrs. Johnson's Music Room. Uh, today we are going to start learning about Philharmonic and what that means and we're going to read a story about the Philharmonic. So the first thing we're going to do is do just that. The Philharmonic gets dressed. Smaller books, I can move closer. It's almost Friday night. Outside, the dark is getting darker and the cold is getting colder. Inside, lights are coming on in houses and apartment buildings. And here and there, uptown and downtown, and across the bridges of the city, 105 people are getting ready to go to work. First, they get washed. There are 92 men and 13 women. Many take showers, a few take baths. Two men and three women run bubble baths, and one man reads in the tub while the cat watches. One woman sits in the bubbles and sings. When they have finished washing, they dry. They use big towels and little towels and a lot of dusting powder. All the men shave except for three, who have beards. Two trim. Then, when the 105 people are showered and bathed, shaved and toweled, dusted and dried, they put on their underwear. How silly. The men wear undershirt shorts or briefs. Some of the men wear t-shirts, undershirts, or sleeve with sleeves. Some wear undershirts without sleeves, and a few of the 92 don't wear undershirts at all. But night and the temperature are falling and one thin man buttons up a, long, a suit of long sleeve, long legged underwear. All the men put on black socks. There are short socks and long socks and fancy silk socks that have decorations called clocks. Some of the men wear leg garters to keep the long socks from falling down around their ankles. The 13 women put on different kinds of complicated underwear, underpants, pantyhose, and stockings, petticoats or slips, and brassieres. One woman, whose feet always freeze, puts on wool socks over her stockings. When all the men have their underwear on, they get into their long sleeve white shirts and button them up. Then they put on black trousers. 45 men stand up to get into their pants. 47 sit down. Each pair of pants has a shiny black stripe down the outside of each leg. The men zip zippers and button a button or two. One man has a wavy black has wavy black hair streaked with white like lightning. He puts on a very soft white shirt with ruffles down the front. It has special cuffs that fasten with cufflinks. This man hooks a white black cloth belt around his waist. The belt is called a cummerbund. None of the other men wear belts with their pants. They button suspenders into the waistlines of their pants and snap the suspenders over their shoulders. Eight women dress in long black skirts. They wear black tops, sweaters, or blouses. Four women put, women put on long black dresses, and one wears a black jumper over a black shirt. A few of the women put jewelry on, a necklace, earrings, but no bracelets. Bracelets could, would get in the way when they are working. All the men put on black bow ties. Some tie them on in front of mirrors. Some stare into space and tie them. The thin man whistles a tune as he ties his tie on. 27 men clip on ties that are already made into bows. The man with the wavy black and white hair and roughly shirt and the cummerbunds, cummerbund ties on a very big white bow tie. It looks like a white bat. No one else has a tie like his. He slips on a white vest and then a black jacket that is short in the front and long in the back, where it divides into two like black beetle wings. The jacket and pants are called tails. Tonight, all the other 91 men put on tuxedo jackets. 
These are black too, with shiny satin lapels, but they do not have that beetle wing back. Look, it's hard to turn. When all the men and women are completely dressed in black and white, they are ready to go out. They put on overcoats, jackets or capes, boots or rubbers, mittens or gloves, some scarves, many hats, a few earmuffs. Then most everyone picks up a case. The cases are different shapes and sizes of, and shades of black and brown. The man with the dark wavy hair with the lightning, white lightning in it, the ruffly shirt, the cummerbund, and bow tie that looks like a white bat, picks up a very thin leather briefcase. No one else has a case like his. All the 105 men and women say goodbye. Goodbye to their mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, or friends, children, dogs, birds, a cat, whoever is staying at home. Then they walk out of 105 doors into 105 streets and they take and there they take cabs, cars, subways or buses to the middle of the city. The man with the black and white wavy hair wears a black coat with a velvet collar and a white silk scarf. He steps into a very long car that is waiting for him outside of his apartment building. It's very fancy. While the drivers drive, while the driver drives, the man opens his case and looks at some papers. He sings a little and hums. At 8.25 on Friday night in the middle of the city, 104 people walk onto this big stage in Philharmonic Hall. They have left their overcoats, jackets or capes, boots or rubbers, mittens or gloves, some scarves, many hats, a few earmuffs backstage and a dark green metal lockers. They have left their cases in different shapes and sizes and shades of black and brown back there too. Now, 101 of the men and women are carrying the musical instruments that were in those cases. See? Three people do not carry instruments. They are the harpist who plays the harp and the two timpanists who play the kettle drums and smaller percussion instruments. The cymbals, a gong, these instruments are too heavy to carry around. They are already on stage. There are 102 chairs on the stage and two stools. Near each of these, there is a music stand with sheets of music on it. The 104 people take their seats. The double bass players sit on a stool, on stools. Let's see, where are they? Let me find them. There's a double bass player, but he's not sitting yet. Hmm. Oh, there, right there. See, they're sitting on their stools. Everyone turns to the first page of music. It is a white page covered with black lines and musical notes. The man with the black wavy hair lit with white enters. He walks to the front of the stage and steps one step up onto a box called a podium. There he can be seen very clearly by the 104 people on the stage and by the hundreds of people in the audience. The audience applauds. The man bows. He is the conductor, the leader of the orchestra, and he holds a stick in his hand. It is called a baton, which is French for stick. You see the baton? I wonder what he uses that baton for. The conductor raises the baton in the air. Way up on the ceiling of Hill Philharmonic Hall, six chandeliers sparkle silently. The conductor brings the baton down in the hall, which is as wide and as long as a red velvet football field, fills with music. See the conductor? See what he's doing? He's using his bat baton, waving it around. The music floats and rises, it sings and dances from violas, violins, cellos, double basses, flutes, a piccolo, bassoons, clarinets, oboes, French horns, trumpets, trombones, a tuba, a harp, 
drums, cymbals, chimes, and one thin silver triangle. It is 8.30 on Friday night and 105 men and women dressed completely in black and white have gone to work, turning the black notes on white pages into a symphony. They are the members of the Philharmonic Orchestra and their work is to play beautifully. The end. So I want to quickly talk about what a Philharmonic Orchestra is. So a Philharmonic is, so the name of the story is the Philharmonic Gets Dressed. It's talking about the people that make up the Philharmonic Orchestra. Now a Philharmonic Orchestra is um, a group of people that get together and they play music professionally. So people pay, they, it's like a concert. They, um, they buy tickets to go and see the different, um, the different shows. So we actually have a group in Rochester that is a Philharmonic Orchestra, and we're going to learn all about them in the coming weeks. We're also going to learn all about what makes up an orchestra. So this week we learned about the conductor in our, in our book. The conductor is the guy who stands in front of all the people who are playing the music. He has a baton, which is a, is French, is a French word for stick. So he's got a stick and he stands in the front of all of those people. It was 104 people he stood in front of and he waves it to keep a tempo, to keep a beat. And he can, makes it so that all of the kids, or all of the, not the kids, all of the adults play together. So that's his job. So next week we're going to learn about the families of the orchestra and the instrument names. Um, my dog and cat are currently having a face off so I need to go deal with that. I will see you guys on Friday for our Friday read aloud. Bye friends!